How's your thing going? It's it's going great, and, and having you participate is fantastic. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I heard your interview on the on the oh the uh, NHL the, Network uh, on radio, and oh, I was okay. like, Chris, I, I said I'll help the guy. I said I'll help <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Sorry. Thank you there. Yeah, let's close that. That was the jersey, huh? That was. Uh, the they had different ones. They had the uh, the Kelly green and gold. Uh, I like the the original original. Oh, with the with the circle one. Yeah. That yeah, was like a blue, gray, and white. Right. right yeah. A touch of green in it. Right. Yeah. That was with the with the with the stylized seal on it. Yeah. And More like the Vancouver Canuck colors. Right there. You want me to look over here? Uh, actually, at, at me, I'll just look okay. over here and there. So. Okay. All right. So, Wayne, when you hear the name California Golden Seals, mm -hmm. well, what do you think? What do I think of when I hear California Golden Seals? Oh, a lot of different things. Uh, <clears throat> I grew up, I was such a huge uh, Oakland A's fan. And I know Charles Finley, uh, when he bought the hockey team, tried to coordinate the uh, California Seals to be similar to the Oakland A's. And, the yellow and green and white, and then of course, white baseball shoes coincided with painting the skates white and having white skates. So I grew up sort of a, a Seals fan, but more of an Oakland A's fan. Excellent there. Now, I understand the very first game, mm -hmm. tell me about the very first game you saw and your impressions yeah. of the Seals back then. Well, my very first game I ever saw in the National Hockey League was the Oakland Seals were playing against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I think it was either uh, end of December 67 or early January, February 68. So it would be the first year that the Seals were in the National Hockey League. And that time they were called the Oakland Seals. My grandmother took me to the game and we were in the very last row uh, of Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens. And uh, I believe the score was either 7-3 Toronto or 8-3 for Toronto. But what was so ironic about the game was the fact that Gary Smith was a goaltender for the Oakland Seals, and when I turned pro in 1978, Gary Smith was the goaltender I played with in the Indianapolis Racers. So here I was playing with a guy, and I told him, you know, the first game I ever saw, I was six years old, you were in net, and you weren't very good. <laughs> well, when you, when you were growing up, what was your impressions of the Seals as a team? Did you mm -hmm. think they were good? Like, what did you think of them? What did I think of the Seals growing up? Uh, I didn't know a whole lot about them because of the fact they were on the West Coast. The games generally came on a little bit later. Obviously, their record wasn't very good. So as a kid, you sort of tend to follow the teams that were sort of better at the time, Detroit, Chicago, Montreal, Toronto. But I do remember mostly my dad saying, you know, the greatest thing to happen for hockey uh, was expansion. and you should hope that Oakland and LA and Minnesota, Pittsburgh, those teams are successful. And I, I can remember asking him why he thought that. And he always said that, you know, if those franchises do well, that means there's more opportunity for kids to make the National Hockey League. There'll be more teams and it'll give you a better opportunity. So, you know, as a family and my dad and I, we always pulled for the Seals and the Kings and those sort of teams that do well. The fact that they had a poor winning record, I know you were really young back yeah. then, but, but did you have any you know, like feelings about why they were doing so badly, or do you feel sorry for them at all? Or? Um, I don't think you felt sorry for them. You know, when you're following the, the SEALs to see how they're doing, whether they're doing well or not well. As a child, you know, as a kid, you don't really think uh, uh, of um, the success of the organization. You're not really thinking that way. You're just sort of watching and following the team. Um, I do remember that, uh, I remember thinking that it wasn't a very good team, but maybe for about a two or three year span there that maybe the best player in hockey was their goaltender, Jules Malash, uh, to how dominant he was and how many saves he made and how miraculous he was every night. Um, but it was a small world because I was friends with the Johnson family out of Peterborough and Joey Johnson, I believe, played for the Seals. In high school, my friend, his brother, might have been one of the best California Seals ever, Dennis Marook. So I seemed to have this little connection with the Seals, even though I didn't know a whole lot about them. I have a question about the, the colorful uniforms, mm -hmm. the green and yellow and the white skates. When you first saw those, I mean, like, what, was, what did you think about that choice in the uniforms? <laughs> what did I think of the choice of the uniforms? Uh, well, first of all, like I said, 
I was a huge Vita Blue Oakland A fan and followed them and their success, obviously. It just didn't seem like the, the transition from baseball, the green, yellow, white, the white cleats, uh, seemed to be a good transition into hockey. When I saw the white skates, I remember thinking, wow, I, if I play in the NHL, I hope I don't have to wear white skates. <laughs> that was probably my real feelings. Uh, but the players tell me, or the guys who played on the, that team tell me that, you know, they painted them and, and the trainer painted them for the players. And I guess they were paid a couple hundred bucks if they wore white skates. Uh, but by the end of the year, they said the skates were so much heavier than anybody else's. Even if they were a pretty good team, they weren't going to win because they were slower than anybody else. <laughs> Excellent there. Now, you know, at the time, I mean, did you ever think California would, would prove to be a, uh, a good market for the NHL? Did I think it would be a good market for the NHL? I, I'll tell you this. You know, the one thing in life is you learn as you go along and you learn by mistakes. And the National Hockey League in 1966 came up with this great idea, okay, we're gonna expand and we're gonna make our game bigger. But the six owners of the original six were very selfish and very greedy. You can have a team, but we don't want you to do well. So you get all the worst players that we have that can't play in the NHL, you're gonna start your franchises. And so what happens is people aren't stupid. If your team's not successful, people aren't gonna show up. And here we go, we, we put teams in LA and Minnesota and, and St. Louis and <clears throat> uh, uh, Oakland. And then after two or three years of not winning, people go, well, that's not a hockey city. Hockey can't go well there. They're not, they can't be successful. And as time went on here, the NHL started to realize, okay, hold on a second. If we're gonna expand and put teams in Tampa Bay and put teams in Dallas, uh, we're gonna have to give them something so that people are going to want to come out and support the team. Now, if they don't come out to support the team when they're successful, you simply say, okay, it's, maybe it's not a great hockey town or maybe it's not a great sports city. But I think we've proven in Tampa Bay and San Jose and now L.A. and Anaheim that if teams are successful, hockey can go a long way. And it's too, it's too bad and it's unfortunate that back in 67, they didn't get the pick of the same kind of caliber players to be a successful organization that we could sit there and go, all right, this is a great hockey market, and today we've, we're proving that it is a good hockey market. Now, and this is the last couple of questions. When, when you joined the LA Kings, mm -hmm. was the Seals experience, was was that in the back of your mind, and did that, did that worry you at all? Uh, when, I, when I joined the LA Kings, I, I'll tell you this. So, you know, I knew I was going to get moved. Uh, it came to a point where the ownership in Edmonton and I had agreed, okay, and they sort of basically said, okay, you can kind of pick where you want to go. Um, I sort of narrowed it down to the New York Rangers, Detroit Red Wings, and, and uh, the LA Kings. And I remember um, people always thought that, you know, I came to LA because my wife Janet said, okay, you should play in LA. And the reality was my wife and I were really set and sort of had our mind that we were going to go to Detroit because I grew up a huge Gordy Howe fan. It was close to my hometown. It's a great sports city. And it was my dad who actually said, you know, you should do something really unique. You should go to L.A. And I remember thinking, wow, okay. So I chose L.A. Um, we were 20th out of 21 teams the year before. They were second to last in the league. It wasn't a very good team. I went from one of the greatest teams that ever played the game, winning four championships in five years. And I remember thinking the very first exhibition game we had 10,000 people at. Uh, in the old uh, LA Forum thinking, wow, what did I get myself into? But we had the right group of people around that understood it was more than just playing the game, that we had to get in the market and sell the game and introduce kids and get community hockey going, high school hockey going, you know, and the rest is history. And I truly enjoyed and loved every minute of playing in LA. Now, when you think of, of the Seals' place in NHL history, like what, what do you think the legacy of the, uh, the California Golden Seals is? Oh, what do I think the Seals' legacy is? Not, I don't try to be mean, but not very good. Uh, you know, I, <clears throat> I, wish, I wish they could have started out with a better team. And I think that if you could start out with a better team, you, you build upon that. Uh, and I think they would have built up a market, and maybe today we'd still have a team in Oakland. Um, you know, it was, it was uh, uh, the foresight of the National Hockey League to expand our game from the Northeast and, and Canada. 
to get it in California. Uh, those were sort of the the, uh, the beginnings of expanding our sport into places where people said, well, maybe hockey's not good there, but California has proven to be one of the best hockey markets in all of North America with the Ducks and the Kings and the, and the San Jose Sharks. They all sell out. They all have good organizations. And it would really mean a lot to the NHL if San Jose could get to that next step and win a championship. It would bring a lot of charm and charisma to, to Northern California. And, and uh, with the Seals, they stopped. They moved to Cleveland in 76. Yeah. Uh, that was before you turned pro. Yeah. But did you ever... In the back of your mind, think well. When I enter the NHL, maybe I'll get drafted. Did you ever think of the possibility that you might become a California Golden Seal back then? Was that? Uh, Did I think about it? You know, you. I guess as a kid, you always think about okay, what can happen in the draft, and where could you end up? And like I said, I had a connection there with my friend in high school, whose brother was Dennis Marook, and I, I believe he went on to be the captain of Cleveland Barons, and he was probably one of the best players ever to play for the Seals and the Barons. And I kept thinking, okay, you know, it'd be kind of cool to play in Cleveland, and if I ever get that chance, I'll probably really enjoy it. But obviously it didn't come to that, and I believe Cleveland and Minnesota merged in 1978, the year before I turned pro. Um, and, and went on to have a successful run there. I think they got to the Stanley Cup Finals with Bobby Smith and Dennis Merrick and those guys. Unfortunately, they ran up against the New York Islanders who were pretty good. But, no, I, you know, listen, I was a big sports fan. I collected all the hockey cards. And, yeah, I was, I was a big fan of the old Oakland uniforms uh, before they went to the green and yellow. Okay, excellent. And this is just a Hail Mary. This is the yep. last thing. Uh, like, with, I don't know if you ever uh, speak with Tom Hanks or ever, did, did, did he ever, if you spoke with him, did he ever talk about his working at the Oakland Coliseum and being a, a Seals fan? He said his introduction to hockey was watching the uh, California Seals, California Golden Seals. And uh, he, he said that, you know, watching the Boston Bruins and Montreal Canadiens come into town sort of sparked him to becoming a big hockey fan. and. Consequently, he went to a lot of NHL games in L.A. Excellent. Wayne, thank you so, oh, yeah, yeah. so much there. So. <laughs>